This video was created by the Scleral Lens Education Society, a nonprofit organization committed to teaching practitioners the art and science of scleral lenses. Before beginning a scleral lens fit, there are some preliminary diagnostic tests that can aid in the patient's ocular health status and contact lens fitting. Topography is a valuable tool that can tell us about the curvature of the cornea. The axial map shows curvature in diopters or millimeters. The tangential map shows us the rate of curvature change. The elevation map shows us the highest and lowest points on the cornea. Sometimes the steepest portion of the eye is not always the tallest part of the eye. These maps give us valuable information about the shape of the front surface of the eye. There are also scleral lens mapping instruments that evaluate the curvature of the eye past the cornea. These instruments map different areas of the sclera, which can help aid in understanding the scleral lens tericity. Some scleral lens manufacturers utilize the keratometry values in selecting an initial lens. Sometimes, showing the maps to the patient can help them gain a better understanding of their eye condition. Pachymetry is also a valuable diagnostic test. Pachymetry measures the thickness of the cornea, and there are some instruments which are able to measure global pachymetry. Instead of just getting a measurement of the central corneal thickness, global pachymetry shows the thickness of the cornea in all different areas. Pachymetry can be helpful in monitoring disease progression and is particularly valuable for conditions such as keratoconus, pellucid marginal degeneration, Fuchs dystrophy, and post-surgical corneas. You may want to repeat pachymetry from time to time and check to see if any areas of the cornea are getting thinner or thicker depending on the disease. Additional testing on the back of the eye may be useful for some practitioners. Evaluation of structures like the macula will prevent any surprises that may be encountered during the lens fitting process. Ensuring the retina is healthy will give practitioners peace of mind before beginning a scleral lens fit. Specular microscopy can help the practitioner assess the endothelium of the cornea. This test is especially important for patients with conditions such as corneal transplants, polymegathism, pleomorphism, guttata, Fuchs disease, and other endothelial corneal disorders. Setting up your exam room before a scleral lens fitting can save you time. Supplies necessary include fluorescein strips, gas permeable contact lens cleaner, conditioning solution, multipurpose solution, non-preserved saline, diagnostic scleral lenses, application devices, and removal tools. Non-preserved saline can come in different forms. This can be obtained from your local pharmacy, online store, or contact lens manufacturer. Diagnostic scleral lenses can be stored either wet or dry. If the lenses are stored dry, be sure to clean them and properly condition them to prevent wettability and comfort issues. If the lenses are stored wet, there will be less chance of wettability issues, but be sure to replace the storage solution after each use. The solution will also need to be replaced in all of the diagnostic lenses every 30 days or per the manufacturer's instructions. Long-term storage of diagnostic scleral lenses may work better when storing them completely dry. Applicator devices may include a large plunger, dental ring or O-ring, and a scleral lens ring. Prepare the patient by setting a paper towel or dental bib on their lap to help catch the fluid and dye that is released after applying the scleral lens to the eye. Additional paper towels can be inserted into the patient's shirt like a bib to offer extra protection. Always wash your hands before handling any scleral lenses. To prepare the scleral lens, be sure to clean and condition the lens. Rubbing the conditioning solution onto the surface of the lens for 30 seconds or more will yield better wettability and comfort. Next, place the lens onto the applicator of your choice. 
Be sure the lens is fairly well centered to prevent the lens from tipping over as you fill it. Fill the lens with non-preserved saline. Be sure to fill the lens completely. A common mistake for patients and practitioners involves not filling the lens enough. Swirl the fluorescein strip into the bowl of the lens until it turns a bright yellow color. To apply a scleral lens, have the patient tuck their chin to their chest and lean slightly forward. Their nose and their eyes should be pointed toward the floor. If the patient's eyes are not facing directly in the down position, there is more risk on insertion error and insertion bubbles due to the liquid falling out of the lens before it reaches the eye. Have the patient hold their lower lid while the practitioner holds their upper lid. In a swift, quick motion, insert the scleral lens directly on the patient's eye. Let go of the patient's eyelids before removing the application device, as the pressure of the lids can assist in stabilizing the scleral lens from popping out. There are many devices and methods to help assist with scleral lens application. Large plungers can be found through ophthalmic magazines and online ordering. The large plunger does require more than one finger to hold it and balance the lens. Another applicator is called the scleral lens ring. It is made of a flexible plastic material, allowing the ring to fit on most everyone's finger, no matter how small or large. The lens is placed on the center of the ring and then filled with non-preserved saline. With this method, only one finger is required to balance the lens. A dental ring or O-ring can also be used to balance the scleral lens on one finger. The reason scleral lenses cannot be balanced on one finger alone is because the lens will get top-heavy after filling it with saline, causing it to topple over. If you do not wish to use any applicator devices, you can use your fingers instead. You can create a tripod using three fingers to balance the lens. You can also use two fingers and balance the lens in the crevice formed between both fingers. After successfully applying the scleral lens to the patient's eye, evaluate the lens with the slit lamp. Be sure to check for insertion bubbles. If there is an insertion bubble, the lens will need to be removed and reinserted. Insertion bubbles do not dissipate with time like some corneal gas permeable lenses do, so it is important to remove the lens and start over. After confirming there are no bubbles present, evaluate the fluid layer between the posterior portion of the scleral lens and the anterior portion of the cornea. This area has names such as fluid reservoir, fluid layer, posterior tear lens, and clearance. Check the central clearance of the lens. If there are any areas of touch, remove the lens and select a lens with the larger sagittal depth. Also evaluate the mid-peripheral and limbal fit of the lens to ensure appropriate clearance is achieved. Observe the edges of the lens to see if the conjunctiva is well aligned with the landing zone of the scleral lens. Check for edge lift or edge compression. Be sure to evaluate all positions of the lens, including superior, inferior, nasal, and temporal edges, as the fit of the lens can vary in each position. Be sure to allow the lens to settle for at least 30 minutes before continuing the scleral lens fitting process. Current research shows majority of lens settling occurs within this time frame, so it is important to let the lens settle in order to get accurate measurements and over-refraction. If your office has an anterior segment ocular coherence tomographer, or OCT, this instrument can provide valuable information about the lens fit, and it can help practitioners gain confidence. First, check the amount of central clearance. Some OCT instruments have lens fitting features which automatically calculates the amount of overall clearance in various areas of the lens. 
The OCT can also be used to evaluate edge alignment. The edge of the scleral lens should rest gently on the conjunctiva without excessive edge lift or edge impingement. If the scleral lens edge is too flat, the lens may move excessively on the eye. The patient may also complain of foreign body sensation and air bubbles are easy to enter the lens. If the edge is too steep, the patient may have blanching or blood vessel constriction around the edge of the lens. They may complain their eyes get red and the lens is often difficult to remove. To assess scleral tericity, apply fluorescein over the lens after the lens is applied to the eye rather than in the bowl of the lens. Assess where the fluorescein enters under the lens. This pattern will demonstrate the flat and steep meridians of the scleral surface. The fluorescein will penetrate the flatter meridian and will not be seen under the steeper meridian. After confirming an appropriate scleral lens fit, perform an overrefraction. Retinoscopy can be performed in the phoropter or a simple autorefraction over the lens can yield a good starting point. Proceed to an overrefraction in the phoropter and record the results. Add the overrefraction data to the diagnostic lens power to obtain the final lens power. Scleral lenses are best removed with a small plunger. Wet the plunger with a small drop of non-preserved saline or multipurpose solution. Apply the plunger toward the periphery of the scleral lens, making sure to maintain full contact with the scleral lens. If the plunger rests partially on the lens and partially on the conjunctiva, the plunger will not suction properly and the lens will be difficult to remove. Do not place the plunger directly in the middle of the scleral lens. Doing so will also make the lens removal quite difficult. It is best to apply the plunger toward the mid-periphery or the edge of the lens and pull at a tangential angle. If the plunger is suctioned toward the bottom of the lens, simply pull down and out. Alternatively, if the plunger is attached to the superior portion of the lens, pull up and out. You may want to begin a scleral lens dispense by having the patient watch a great free video about care and handling of scleral lenses, which can be found on sclerolens.org. This informative video teaches the patient how to properly handle scleral lenses and care for them. Next, have the patient thoroughly wash their hands with an oil-free soap and lint-free towel. Prepare your station with items such as gas permeable contact lens solution, application and removal devices, lens cases, non-preserved saline, and written instructions. If the patient already has the lenses in, begin with lens removal techniques. If the patient is not wearing the lenses, begin with lens application training. You can instruct the patient to gently massage the lens with conditioning solution or multipurpose solution prior to application to help with lens wettability. Next, place the scleral lens on the application device of your choice. Fill the lens with non-preserved saline. Have the patient tuck their chin to their chest and look toward the floor. Placing a flat mirror on the surface of a table may aid in this portion. With the opposite hand, hold the upper and lower eyelids open as large as possible and place the lens directly onto the eye. Let go of the lids and lashes first before removing the application device. If your patient has limited mobility or major complications with lens insertion, a scleral lens stand may be a great alternative for them. 
With this device, the patient focuses on a light to guide them toward the lens. This also gives them the ability to use both hands to stabilize their eyelids. For scleral lens removal, instruct the patient to place a small amount of saline or multipurpose solution onto the small plunger. Place a plunger toward the mid-periphery or edge of the lens until it is firmly attached to the front surface of the lens. Pull out at a tangential angle to remove the lens. Scleral lenses worn on a daily basis require overnight storage and care. A cleaning and disinfecting solution will kill pathogens and remove debris associated with eye infections. To prepare the lens for disinfection, a cleaner with a surfactant can be used. Rubbing the lens in the palm of the hand or between the thumb and the index finger will remove debris such as protein, lipids, and makeup. Scleral lenses are made from gas permeable materials. There are two types of daily use disinfection systems for gas permeable materials. Multipurpose disinfecting solutions provide two steps of care with one bottle, cleaning and disinfecting. Multipurpose disinfecting solutions provide continuous disinfection during a 24 hour period. Make sure the lens is completely submerged before applying the lid to the lens case. Hydrogen peroxide solutions are effective for all scleral lenses, especially for those patients sensitive to chemicals and preservatives in multipurpose solutions. Remind patients to gently open and close the basket due to the large size of the lens. An incorporated surfactant loosens dirt, debris, protein, and deposits. Open bottles of any disinfecting solution should be replaced every three months as they lose activity over time against fungal and bacterial species as a result of daily contamination. Practitioners should caution patients using the cases of hydrogen peroxide systems as they were not designed to use with scleral lenses. Hydrogen peroxide solutions neutralize into saline within four to six hours via a platinum disc and do not provide continuous disinfection. Rinse the lens with a multipurpose conditioning solution or saline solution prior to insertion. It is important not to use tap water to rinse the lenses or cases due to the association of acanthamoeba keratitis with tap water. Enzymatic cleaners can be used on a daily, weekly, or monthly basis to remove stubborn deposits. During a scleral lens follow-up, be sure to ask the patient about their lenses. How is the vision? How is the comfort? How long are you able to wear the lenses? What are you using to fill the lenses? Is the vision clear all day? Or are you experiencing any problems with the lenses? It might be helpful to schedule the patient for their follow-up appointment later in the day, after they have worn their scleral lenses for many hours. This will give you a better idea of how the lens is settling and aligning with the eye after multiple hours. Begin by checking the vision through the scleral lenses. Perform an over-refraction to determine if any change to the power of the lens is necessary. Take a look with the slit lamp and evaluate the lens surface for any scratches, deposits, or wettability issues. You can view the overall fit and edge alignment as well. To determine the rate of tear exchange, place a copious amount of fluorescein on the surface of the lens or on the conjunctiva. Then, view the lens with the slit lamp and carefully observe the edges of the lens to detect the fluorescein starting to fill the posterior lens chamber. If there is no fluorescein visible in the lens chamber, the fit of the lens may need to be modified. An OCT can be utilized at the follow-up to check the central clearance, limbal clearance, and edge alignment. Based on your findings, make the necessary adjustments to the lens by calling your contact lens manufacturer. Scleral lens follow-ups may be repeated at regular intervals, depending on the diagnosis. By following the steps in this video, you will have all the tools you need to succeed with scleral lens fitting.